Hello there kitties, I'm Karin, the vacuum chip witch. And it's time for the final part of the IBM Wheelwrighter restoration process. I've done a lot of work of the camera. I, uh, I took it all apart, all, all the covers, all the plastics. Uh, I took that stuff off, cleaned it. So today, it's time to put it back together. But before that happens, I think I tracked down uh, the problem with with the ribbon uh, not being fully lowered. So it's time to tackle this one to the bench. So the problem with the ribbon, if uh, if we take a look, uh, it's uh, it's way up here. And then the problem is that uh, the the cassette doesn't fully descend. It uh, it doesn't go all the way down. And I think this was caused by uh, sticky glue. So let's take a closer look. Remove the, the ribbon cassette. Let me put the gloves on for the process. This is gonna be a little bit dirty. Just a teeny tiny bit. What we need to do is remove the upper assembly First, there's the Sager, the retainer ring that uh, holds this shaft in, uh, in the left position. If we remove the retainer ring, we can move the shaft to the right. And there's, uh, there's also the spring and the stepper motor connector. that I will just undo, removing the mechanism. And this would be the dirty part. This is what uh, advances uh, the ribbon. Or, uh, one moment, please. This part uh, advances the correction ribbon. And this motor advances the, the proper printing ribbon. And while this one is pretty much okay, the other one <coughs> is driven from, uh, from this as assembly because this lever is kept... Uh, the, this lever is uh, kept uh, pretty much uh, fixed uh, sideways. It can um, do some uh, up and down motion, but uh, but uh, it stays in place uh, with uh, with the front uh, to back connection. And uh, this lever. It, uh, and then the whole the whole assembly will move. It is pivoted uh, right here, and when there's no freedom of uh, of motion in this mechanism, then uh, it might uh, it might be binding and not fully lower than the carriage, than the ribbon, the cassette. 
So, fixing this might be as simple as using some WD-40 on, uh, on the mechanical parts. And then uh, relubricating. If this joint wasn't riveted, I would take it apart and just uh, clean uh, those parts separately, but it looks like it uh, it has to it has to stay. I can uh, put some uh, oil to to free this thing up. I also try with a bit of acetone or with WD-40 There's some grime on the surface. It doesn't really matter, but I really like cleaning things uh, pretty thoroughly. If I can't clean it with WD-40, then I will probably clean it with isopropyl alcohol. So I'll be just going high on fumes. Some oil again. And I can see it now that it's not it's not binding anymore. It's pretty nice. Just like precision mechanics should be. So this might be the thing that does the job for the for us. I put some Vaseline on the on the surfaces. And then the belt should do it. Time to put the mechanism back together, connecting 
the stepper motor and making sure that uh, the stud uh, on on the left side uh, of uh, the carriage goes into the groove just like this now the retainer ring it's a teeny tiny bit bent I will straighten it and it's back in its place the cassette goes on and try to switch it on and it goes fully down now the problem with this try again to see if it was not a fluke oh I forgot about the spring Here it is. Up and down, up and down, fully down. So now it will be time to reassemble the keyboard that I just cleaned. Get the keyboard frame. I will disconnect the power. Got uh, got the LED bezel. I cleaned it all with water and uh, dishwashing liquid. Clicks in place, pretty nice. The keyboard cover goes on just like this. Yeah, gotta be careful not to make that off by one uh, error. Now it's gonna be Time to put all those keys in place. The space bar, the code uh, or control key. to take a look at my Tauri communication device to see what goes where an empty key goes right here That would be the right shift. Oh, 
I always uh, start with uh, with the larger keys just to have a uh, uh, reference point the carriage return and the line feed That's the tabby. Now the Tabulation control keys. I'd rather get them as soon as possible than the deletion key. I will keep the old uh, German uh, keyboard layout with one uh, slight modification of uh, replacing uh, Y and Z.
That would be it for the keyboard. Time to put the upper cover back. But before it happens, I think I will test the typewriter. Try to try to type some characters. Okay, time to put the cover on. There was one thing I mentioned about the cover. Um, Making sure it all clicks into place. And there was uh, one thing I mentioned about the cover. It's the scale. It's time to attach it with some proper glue. Of course, I will have to clean this first. Nasty gunky sticky type. That's not how you do it. Since this is uh, plexiglass I uh, can't uh, clean it with uh, isopropyl alcohol because this will dissolve uh, the polymer. So I'm, I will be using the WD-40 on this. Normally those, um, those parts, uh, they are They are just uh, hot welded together, but uh, since this is plastic and this is brittle, it came apart and someone just tried to glue it together with uh, sticky tape. Not even using some proper glue. And sticky tape leaves a lot of nasty residue. Mm. 
This is also quite brittle and it's already pretty much broken, but I will restore it the best I can. As best as I can. <laughs> There's also some dirt on the surface of the plexiglass. I have to be careful <coughs> not to wipe the the markings of uh, of the scale. Of course, uh, sometimes it happens that I fuck up, but I try as I can uh, not to fuck up. This might even have been repaired uh, in the pre cyanoaculate era. Cyanoaculate uh, came into use in Poland uh, pretty late in the 1990s. It was uh, it was called super glue or wonder glue. And uh, all it is about is living radical polymerization. So I will apply some some of this super glue. Of course, I need to unclog it. I will apply uh, some a teeny tiny drop of, uh, of super glue on every one of those points where where it was. Uh, where it was welded not exactly sure if it will do the trick But at least I will try. I can also apply some uh, super glue on on here.
uh, that should be pretty much enough. I could uh, wait for a moment uh, to this cure. All right, picking up pretty much where we left off. Let's put the printer attachment together. I also cleaned this. So the interface board goes first into the central position and it clicks in place. And then the LPT board the cover and this is ready to go to the back side of <coughs> our printer Just like that. Connecting the interface cable. And the printer option is reinstalled. So it's time for the paper feed and uh, the nice uh, suppressing cover. Unfortunately, the noise suppressing cover lost its noise suppression functionality when I was cleaning it because it had a lot of nasty sponge in it. I had to remove it. Let's uh, install the instruction cards. That's pretty clever of IBM to ins include the on hand uh, reference it's like F1 in software look at that beauty this is the German version and I restart one of the missing one of the missing brackets, I replaced it with a uh, zip tie. I will also probably use a zip tie to fix uh, one more problem with, with the, the machine. By the way, you can, uh, you can uh, pull it out, you can uh, put it back in. <laughs> Look how clever it is. Those IBM engineers definitely had brains. And now the soundproofing cover that had um, the part with three pieces of sponge, but uh, that sponge uh, deteriorated pretty 
badly, it turned into nasty goo. And the sponge um, bracket uh, should be put into those holes. But there's a one more thing I have to repair in order to get it going and uh, and use it. See, there is a stud on each side of the of the sandproofing cover attachment. <coughs> and there should be one on the opposite side, but it is missing. And because it's missing, it's just... Oh! I got one thing wrong here, and pretty badly wrong. I will have to recombobulate this. <laughs> That's gonna be a... Sometimes you don't know... You don't notice things. Sometimes you don't notice things and run into a lot of problems. Gonna lift the back because I accidentally forgot about putting the main switch uh, through the hole. Uh, okay, it's lifted now. Wonder if I can lift it just barely enough to get the switch out or I will just I will just uh, pull the tab The switch is in the correct position. Clicked on both sides. All the tabs uh, on the front are in the correct position. It's fortunately recombobulated. And now I will use a drill to make the the hole for the missing stud. I will replace the stud with uh, an uh, M4 board. and probably glue it in place mm, let's get a four millimeter one And that's a whole new hole. And the replacement stud. Maybe I should make it a little bit longer.
And I should be able to glue it in place with cyanoacrylate glue. That should do the trick pretty nicely. Leave it for some time to, to cure and while it is curing I might give the typewriter a little test because that's probably what you've been waiting for. I got some paper, some uh, some scrap paper. Of course, I need to plug it in, and then I need to connect the parallel interface to demonstrate how the printer attachment works. And of course I've got the lovely old school Centronics interface on the typewriter's printer attachment. That goes into the port. Now I can turn on the printer, then the typewriter, insert the, the paper, you need to remember that uh, when inserting the paper the, the side you see is uh, opposite to the side uh, that uh, you, you print or write. So in order to load the paper I need to pull the lever and uh, I can do it manually from the keyboard with the with the paper then the platen mechanism but I can also do it automatically by pulling the lever and the paper stops um, at some point when it is loaded I pulled the lever again and it stopped uh, some more I, I can move the paper out and try again to do it just once Lock the paper in position. And in order to use the printer, I have to choose the printer option on the keyboard. This is done by uh, pressing code and 5, and that would be control 5. The printer is ready for action. It's indicated by uh, the third and fourth uh, LED going on. And let's try to print something from the computer.
And look at that! Thing of beauty. Drive forever. It's done. One of my favorite songs by Dream Theater. Ready for another one? I need to reinitialize the printer. Oh my goodness, I forgot to... I forgot to set the printer correctly. <laughs> Still, it can be attributed to lack of experience using this device. <laughs> So I think that some uh, future attempts to make something with the printer, that would be the material for another video. And I might be making a new intro for my channel. In the meantime, the glue has probably cured. So let's try to get it back into place. First of all, by putting the sponge uh, holding attachment and then uh, Put the bolt into into the hole. Lift lift this uh, spongy thing, and 
It's in place. It doesn't move around. And then the paper goes back there. The cover goes on. This is an uh, anti glare uh, attachment. If, uh, if you are blinded by the sunlight, it somewhat helps. So, time to try again. Try something slightly different. And when working, the paper goes uh, right. Uh, behind uh, this cover it will exit through the slot uh, above here and now I'm working with uh, quite long uh, lines so uh, there's, uh, there's the warning bell going off uh, Thinking that uh, that this is the uh, A4 portrait orientation, but it's landscape orientation. I should see the paper coming out real soon. Mm, this is pretty interesting. It's it's rather garbled. And the soundproofing cover helps uh, a little bit uh, making the typewriter more silent, but it's still very loud. And the paper is coming out of the machine. Yeah, definitely not what I thought it would be. <laughs> Pretty garbled because I wanted to print an uh, ASCII art version of uh, Caritech logo, but 
Something went one tiny, teeny tiny bit wrong. So let's try something else. Some leftover from the previous job, and there's one problem with paper. Not really hitting the with paper hitting the front on the, on this. of the typewriter. And maybe even restart my computer. Looks like the machine uh, doesn't really like me today. So, the wheel writer is back together, it's working, pretty nice, and just wait for some more vintage electronic typewriter fun, and before that happens, I'll... Uh, I'll turn off the computer and try again. It often if it often helps. So, stay determined and carry on.